Hebel. And I'm Andrew Hebel. We met uh, in Philadelphia, which is where I was born and raised, and Andrew was at Bible school and I was in graduate school, and he was leading a Bible study. And I was a relatively new Christian, a new believer. Andrew and I were just friends at first, and that was for a while. Um, and it, there wasn't really, you know, we didn't really think about even dating. And uh, then two of our friends who knew us really both really well thought that we'd be a really good match together. So um, they told Andrew, but not me, and uh, he kind of started pursuing me. And I was at the same time, simultaneously, only God can do this. I was starting to be interested in him. So we, um, we started dating and um, quickly after, I mean, we knew we were going to be we knew we were moving towards marriage and soon after that we got engaged um, and we did a seven month engagement because it's a very exciting time and we think short engagements are the way to go um, mm -hmm. for us for us it was the way to go so we um, got married but eventually but backtrack to um, when we had that first conversation another thing that we openly discussed is that we both didn't want to um, kiss until we got married so Andrew kind of took the lead on it and brought it up and said that it was his desire to protect me and protect our relationship by setting that boundary um, because we both had gone too far in relationships before um, we really thought that boundary was very important because it would be a slippery slope if um, if we did more than that so we saved our first kiss until our wedding day actually so so what I was attracted to uh, Terrence about at first yeah. was, um, well, other than the fact that she's gorgeous, um, was that wow. she was she was a very real person. She was a new believer, but she was on fire uh, for Jesus, and he had you could tell how much he had changed her life. And um, her her youth pastor used to, or, that, or someone who was involved in her life used to call her the sponge. She would just soak up everything. Um, that had to do with um, the Bible and understanding God and um, discipleship and the Word. And so I was interested in, in that. The relationship began to, to kindle, um, and when we got to the point where we wanted to start dating, uh, we did we did have, sit down and have a conversation. Um, where are you at? Where What's what's your desires for life? What do you, I mean, what do you want to do? And it, it seemed to be on every point, major point for me, we were at the same, we were on the same page. Mm -hmm. And um, so we started dating and it became very clear very quickly that this is the woman that God had for me. Andrew and I were married on July 20th, 2013 um, at the Center Bridge Inn on the Delaware River. And I did all that I could to prepare for our wedding. And um, then of course it was supposed to rain on that day. So, um, you know, it was supposed to be my dream wedding day, and I was so afraid of the rain. But anyway, it was a beautiful day, just spent preparing and in prayer and everything. And then um, it was a beautiful, the sun was shining, come time for the wedding. So the rain actually held off for the whole ceremony, for all of our pictures. And then as soon as we're walking in, Andrew and I are the last ones to walk in, it starts raining. So, but it was just a beautiful day with family, um, friends, and just, wonderful food just great time i terence take you andrew to be my wedded husband to have and to hold from this day forward to have and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse for better or for worse for richer or poorer for richer or poorer in sickness and in health in sickness and in health to respect and to love to respect and to love until death separates us until death separates us according to god's holy ordinance According to God's holy ordinance. And thereto I pledge you my faithfulness and love. And thereto I pledge you my faithfulness and love. For as much as Andrew and Terrence have consented together in a holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God in this assembly and have promised their love and their faithfulness to God, to each other, and have declared the same by joining hands and giving and receiving rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife in Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. You may kiss your bride.
It is now my distinct honor and privilege, incredible joy, I present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Andrew Hebel. It turns out we, three weeks after our wedding, we got pregnant, and a couple weeks later we found out we were pregnant, and uh, that was a huge shock to us, mm -hmm. and we had planned, oh, so perfectly planned, that we would have two years at least together as just a couple and alone, and to be honest, it was really hard adjustment to just adjust to the idea of being pregnant. Um, Andrew had a hard time with it because he was in the student, and I was at work making the money so it was going to be kind of a crazy balance for all that um Andrew kind of freaked out a little bit he'll be the first one to tell you <laughs> um then then starts the pregnancy with being sick all the time and tired all the time um so that was really challenging um it was beautiful and it was wonderful and special time but it was really challenging put a stress on our first year of marriage basically I've been pregnant the whole time we've been married <laughs> So then, two weeks ago, three weeks ago tomorrow, actually, we ha gave birth, I gave birth to um, our little daughter, Eliana Grace Hebel, and um, she is so cute. I couldn't have asked for a cuter baby, and I actually told God I didn't really care how cute she was as long as she was healthy, but it turns out she's cute, <laughs> um, and um, she is so fun, and just, I think our spirits have lifted um just since she's been here, both of us, and our marriage, I mean, we've been tired, we haven't had as much attention to give to each other, and I'm sure this will continue to be, you know, a problem, not a problem, but a balancing act, and, um, but we have the Lord, and my friend told me, um, like I said, we get a lot of advice from elders and people who've been married longer, but she told me, dependence is uh, more important than preparedness, so I don't feel very prepared to be a mom, but I'm definitely depending on the Lord for the strength and the wisdom. We've been blessed with having a, a really, really good baby. He just likes to sit and stare and make faces. Really content. You know, some parents, you know, they, they say they have the most beautiful baby. And, uh, you know, they know they're lying. But I think we, I think we do I confidently think we have the most beautiful baby. Look at her. most important piece of advice that you give in raising a daughter? Besides keeping a shotgun handy? Yeah, yeah I think that's a given. Yeah, but I think that, that, you, that Eliana needs what Terrence needs, what your wife needs. She needs to know that you love her, that you're there for her, you're protecting her, that no matter what happens, you are there. That she is the second most important woman in your life, that no matter where she goes, she can always call you and dad's on her side. She needs you to know, to know that she is secure with you and she loves, and that you love her. <laughs> so on Sundays, we try to sleep in as late as is humanly possible, and then we rush around. Mornings are pretty crazy on Sunday. Sometimes we make pancakes, and um, then we go to church and meet up with people afterwards. Sometimes go to go to lunch or something. Stop by the store and get our pizza crust for Sunday night. Is pizza night? I make pizza. Um, but in the meantime, in the afternoon, we meet up with our small group. Um, so we're heading to church for the 930 service, Fellowship Bible Church, Dallas. It's a fellowship church. Um, we really like it. It's kind of bigger than we usually, I think, would, would settle. Um, somewhere around like 1,500 to 2,000 people. Um, but they, did a really, they did a really good job at making the church seem really small. Um, and from the get-go, walking in, we just noticed that they had um, a desire uh, and, uh, to, to disciple people. They're very vocal about it, very, um, very forward. Um, what they, the messages like over and over and over was um, trying to get the older generation to, um, to pour into the younger generation.
so in our free time, we like to mostly, I think number one is build relationships and hang out with friends and family. Um, doing that, we really like, I really like, I think Andrew really likes too, playing, <laughs> playing card games um, and learning new card games. I've learned a lot new card games since we've been married, um, just from his community, his family. Um, we really like walking, um, staying active. Andrew plays volleyball and basketball sometimes, just to pick up games with friends. And I like to be crafty. Uh, my favorite, my favorite craft to do are scrapbooking and sewing. And um, I'm picking back up into sewing now that I have a daughter. So, and um, I like cooking and baking. Just keeps me busy and gives me um, something to be productive with. So I'm a student at a Dallas Seminary here in Dallas, and it's something that I never really thought. Um, I was going to do. Terrence and I, in making the decision to come here, uh, we, were, we were engaged, we were ready to get married, um, and God put it on my heart that this is where I needed to come. And so we talked about it, prayed about it. Um, part of our marriage, how we do things, is we're not going to make any major life decisions unless we're both in agreement on it. Um, if I think I'm hearing God, about where he wants us to go and what, where to take the family. Um, I expect that God will show that and reveal it to my wife as well. As the Bible says that you know, when we get married, I mean, the two, the Genesis, the Genesis account talks about um, when a man leaves his mother and father and joins with his wife, cleaves to his wife, and the two become one, one flesh. And I wholly believe uh, that Terrence and I are now a single person, united in marriage, um, bonded by um, God through Christ. And so I believe that when, when he makes that decision, when he, I mean, when he has a directive for us that's a major life change, that he's going to show that to both of us. And so we prayed about it, and it became very clear that this is where we're going to go. We didn't know where we are going to live. We didn't know how we were going to get here. We didn't know how we were going to pay for it. Um, but we knew that we needed to come here. So when we got here, through a lot of amazing, just miraculous things, God opened up a place for us to stay on campus, uh, on seminary housing. It's a whole lot cheaper and a lot safer um, for us to live. So we're heading there right now. After we leave our apartment and grab a couple things, uh, we're gonna go back to the house that we do house sitting for. It's a little extra income for us, which is great. A little extra room. Uh, we're gonna have our, our small group over for a Memorial Day weekend barbecue slash going away party uh, for the leaders of our small group who are um, about to go to Washington, D.C. to plant a church. gather here to celebrate the Memorial Day weekend, which honors the people who have sacrificed for our country. We can remember that you have sacrificed yourself for us on the cross, and we have life because of that. So we're grateful for that. We're grateful for the friends you provided and the food you provided as well. May you bless us and be glorified. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I wonder if he would like olives. Mm, I've just given him olives before. Well, we've given it to him on, like, vegetable pizza. So... I'm kind of curious about it. Emerson, you want to try an olive? Hey, maybe he knows what it is. <laughs> Yum! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, but you feel a little bit more rested? Yeah, I, I think 
exactly. A lot less stress. And truthfully, it's, we've had so many people ask to pray for us over the past couple of days. That's really helped too. Um, like we had friends bring us Chick Fil A yesterday, and uh, and then before they left, they prayed for us. Somebody called um, to ask if they could give to us, like where to mail to, and then he asked after a person to pray for us over the phone. Um, wow. It's just it's just been things like that that have happened um, over and over again that have given us more peace. Yeah. Father, thank you for this family and how they've served us and opened their home to us. And thank you for Jill, um, as she's been a mother uh, that I look up to and as she's kind of mentored me. And I thank you for them and I thank you for their children and all the joy and laughter they've brought into our lives. I ask that you bless them in D.C. and bless them with the perfect place to live. And I can't wait to hear um, how you continue to work in their lives, through them and in their lives. In Jesus' name. And Father, thank you for the Mosher's, and thank you for um, the ministry that you've given them, that you have in front of them. Well, I think uh, Andrew and Chance are a, a great couple and a huge asset to each other. Um, we uh, definitely enjoy their friendship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they are wonderful Christian people. We love having them in our small group. We love getting together with them. And I think they're going to make absolutely wonderful parents to Eliana. They are both wonderful Christian people and great friends. So I actually really, really like marriage, and I really haven't found it that difficult. I know a lot of people find the adjustment very difficult, but um, I ha just love having companionship. I love having someone. I was very independent growing up. I love having someone to bounce off. Um, bounce my ideas off, someone to make the decisions that I don't feel like making, um, someone to help me be my helpmate. Um, I love having someone to help and serve, and it gives me a really great purpose in my day-to-day -day life. Um, and I just, I love Andrew, so <laughs> then I love living with him. And I love marriage, too. It's, um, like you said, it's great to have the companionship and have someone who's always there for you. Um, plus, Terrence keeps me from doing a lot of stupid things sometimes, uh, you know. Uh, sometimes I say things a little bit too rash, and she'll hold me back some, uh, maybe on a text message or an email or, or something. Um, uh, it's, just, it's just great to have someone to love and to, to grow together with and to walk through life with. And now we have this little baby, and um, it's, it's just it's awesome sharing this with her. Ecclesiastes um, says that the court of three strands is not easily broken and we see that as a, a symbol for marriage um, that our marriage is not um, founded or dependent on us trying to keep things together but it's dependent on us holding on to Christ and um, a good family friend of ours who recently passed uh, used to teach a message that said um, there's nothing that the nearness of Jesus cannot overcome and I believe that to be true I believe that to be a hundred percent true in every aspect of life, especially marriage. Um, it's not dependent on the partners in, in the relationship, but it's dependent on the one who's established the relationship. As long as that's set up and we're doing that, then I think we'll be all right. 